was it like playing with the Chicago White Sox with Frank Thomas, and Albert Bell, the Hall of Famer Harold Baines? And, 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 um, and can you share any stories from that time with any Albert Bell stories or, or Frank Thomas stories? <laughs> well, I guess I start with Frank, you know, by him being in Columbus, being a native of Columbus, Georgia. I grew up in LaGrange, Georgia, which is 20 minutes away. Uh, Frank kind of took me under his wing um, at an early age at 22, you know, but you don't really learn a whole lot from Frank Thomas in a sense because he was so great as a player, but he took me on his wing to understand the professional way and about trying to be productive at a very early age. You know, uh, great, great guy, but Frank Thomas was, as I recall, remember, was driven by numbers. And he was the only guy to say, look at the, see what his name is at the top of the list in the batting title thing, like every every start of every series. And he, he would calculate how many hits he needed to get to remain in the top three of the batting title, or batting title. Do you have a favorite memory from that era? Um, you know, with Frank, um, I remember I used to meet him all the time at a place in Chicago, this little bar that he loved to go to. It was like his second home. It was his safe haven. And um, I'll never forget it, you know, like summertime in Chicago, like being able to hang out with Frank Thomas, like one of the most polarizing figures in the game of baseball. Uh, but also one of the most well-liked on the other side of Jordan in Chicago. Uh, he always took care of me all the time, man. So uh, I'm forever grateful for that. And I'll never forget it. And we still remain in contact today more than anything. And actually, you just, you just brought me to an interesting segment because that, I, I, that is, you were in Chicago during the, the height of Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah, no doubt. What was, what was that like, and what did you think of Jordan, the baseball player? Unbelievable. I was really cool with MJ, too, the black cat, man. Like, got a chance to play with him. Um, you know, I was one, I guess, one year behind, you know, in a sense. But when he went to double-A, I, uh, I was in able high A ball. But for him, to, when he got ready to go to Arizona, you know, playing with him in spring training and also being able to experience being around such a icon in the game of baseball and see how humbling the game was to him even as such a great athlete that he that he was love to compete on everything it could be shooting trash balls in a trash can uh playing basketball with him uh shooting pool with him everything man but like being around mj just his work ethic was like unbelievable. The only guy I know that could probably drink seven or eight, nine, ten Long Island iced teas and still show up before everyone else at the ballpark the next day, man. That was the craziest thing I've seen. So his his drive to be great was like one of one of a kind. But to see him how he had to work in the game of baseball to get better uh, was even was even more. Like special. The last, I remember, so in 95, the start of 95, we were there in spring training and they wanted him to play in those, uh, uh, whatever game with the replacement guys or whatever. And I remember him saying, no, I don't think you understand. I'm a part of a union still. You know, he was a part of the league union on, in basketball. And I remember him leaving that day and fly his jet around over the stadium before he took off back to Chicago. And I think literally about a month, two months later, he was back on the basketball court. So 95 was my first year getting called up to the big leagues. And I remember seeing the next three years of the second three-peat. And it was, I got a chance to sit right, right there and to be a part of Chicago when that was going on. Because and that was the '94 strike time, right? Yes. And that's why so Jordan went back to back. Four was a strike from the, from the was no postseason going into '95, and so that was 
an experience of a lifetime to be able to do it, man. Like, to be able to be around him and still get a chance to talk to him at certain times. I'm, I'm really good friends with Ron Harper, and Ron Harper really close to him. So, whenever Harper plays golf, when he comes to Georgia to play golf, we always call MJ. So, it's always a good experience. Yeah. But Frank Thomas, I mean, uh, Albert Bell, that's a whole different story. You got time for those? Or? Oh, that dude gave me so much hell. I was his personal pet, per se. I had to play catch with him every day. Uh, the guy was very driven on a time base. Everything was time matter, and he was, I was his catch partner. I would always stand on the white line. He would walk out there. I always have a ball in his back pocket. I would have to play catch him. That's how my arm got so accurate playing catch with Albert Bell because if I overthrew him, he'd make me go chase the ball. And it, everything was for him was in that same manner. Like everything was that most, one of the most intense baseball players I ever played with, um, most prepared. Uh, his locker had tape around it where no one can go inside the little, little tape barrier or whatever it was. Uh, the dude was one of a kind, man. He was special. And if there was any guy that I ever wanted to go to go to war with on the baseball field, he'd be my first pick. And, and uh, speaking of... Um, Very uh, smart, too. Really smart. Would do the crossword puzzle in about 10 minutes when he first got to the ballpark. Unbelievable. Speaking of polarizing figures as well in the sport of baseball, you were traded for one of them, Ken Griffey Jr., to the organization you are now yeah. representing. Can you take me back to that moment? What, what was that? What was that like? Uh, it was uh, it was tough. It wasn't easy, man. It was it was hard, hard experience. And this is before we started to do so much mental health work and mental skill coaches in the game. I didn't have that. You know, it was just myself and just kind of like going through it. And uh, it was uh, very stressful. I'm not even gonna lie, but you know, the good thing about it is that uh, I was able to kind of pave my own way in a sense and gain the trust of the people in Seattle in my own style, uh, under, understanding the, the greatness that came before me that I probably wasn't gonna be able to recreate that same greatness but in my own little space, you know, carve my own path out. And uh, it's been a blessing because of, because of that, I'm still a part of this organization now. Right on. Hey, what do you remember most about the four homer game? That it was in Chicago, uh, my old home. Still got it. Yep. <laughs> uh, it, was, it, it was in Chicago, and it was a, it, it was a part of the place that where I felt like mm, I was giving up on a little bit early, and so I never forgot about that. And I always wanted to do something special when I went back to Chicago, and that just happened to be a really special day that day, going back and do it. And one last question about polarizing figures. <laughs> um, Ichiro Suzuki, got to play with, with him as yeah. well. Um, obviously, you know, a baseball legend. Um, does, does does the does the four thousand hits across pro sports? Is that does that amaze you the most, or what, what was it like playing with him as well? Uh, what's amazing most about Ichiro is that he's still doing the same thing today as he's always done, and also he continues to do right now. So I always say this about Ichiro. The most amazing thing about him is his work ethic and consistency, and we call it, in, Jap in, J in Japanese, they call it Kaizen, never ending, continuously. And he really, truly lives that on a day-to-day -day basis. And I, I, heard, I heard that um, that he had tremendous power in batting practice, and he would almost intentionally not use it during the game. Was that, was that yeah, true? Yeah, because his, 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 his motto was that, I can always go deep, but I like to get hits, and that was his that was his thing in baseball. He always he want, he likes to get hits. He said that's a better art to it than I can always lift the ball at the ballpark. So uh, special, special, special man. Very selfish man, but very special man. I told him his worst the worst thing about him as a as a person 
is that he did not re recreate any of that talent that it's all going to waste. So you, that's why I call him selfish. <laughs> but he said that's why Ichiro. Ichiro means one. So only one. So. All right, two more before I let you go here. Um, I gotta ask you about Julio Rodriguez. How, what do you think of him? Are you uh, uh, part of his mentorship, so to speak? And, and um, what, what is he bringing to the Mariners right now? Yeah, uh, I've been, you know, part of Julio for you know the, since I've got here since 19. Uh, he was hurt a little bit early on, so I didn't get a chance to see him play that much. But uh, obviously, 2020, uh, I call him, the, I call him like the little baby bull. I don't know. There's a guy who played here in Texas that he reminds me of. I didn't get a chance to see him play as much because he played in the 70s and 80s, but uh, Cesar Cedeno, that's the kind of talent that he has. And if you look at Cesar Cedeno's career statistics, it's been very good. And this guy, and he started very young, same as Julio. Uh, and the one biggest thing about Julio, as, a, as, great, as great as his talent is, a part of that is his charisma, that he's able to enjoy in the midst of anything that goes on in his success or failure is that his joy is that just continue to thrive in, in those moments and that's been the biggest thing and I think he's going to be a star in his own light but skill wise he reminds me of a guy by the name of Cesar Cedeno. And I got to ask you, you mentioned the role of the Sun, yeah. I got to ask you about your son Dabs with the yeah. Detroit Tigers. Um, what have, what have you thought of the, the start of his career and and and, um, and and coming along there with the Tigers? Yeah. Now? Uh, it's been interesting. You know, he's already had a similar situation being traded for a future Hall of Famer um, and uh, Justin Verlander, and and to be able to do it such such at a young age. So he's had to develop under you know the leadership in D Detroit now, and he's getting a chance to to be uh, to go down in history being a father son combination. I don't understand what type of stress or pressure he's under because of being named after you know coming along in, in my light or my footsteps although he's creating his own path just the fact that he's got a chance to experience the big leagues uh, to be able to see him go through the, the uh, progression of getting better uh, trying to become more consistent and a successful baseball player uh, it's been a joy the ride along with him is uh, pretty been pretty good all right and the last one for you it's a fun one um, and you grew up in, or well, you played in Major League Baseball during the prime of when these were coming out. What is the greatest baseball movie of all time and why? Well, you know, in my case, you know, most people have picked the sentimental. Uh, I'm going to go with Major League, man, because I like comedy, fun, stuff like that. And, I mean, you can't go wrong with Willie Mays Hayes, so, you know, obviously, so I'm a big fan of uh, Wesley Snipes, so uh, that's one of the big, one of the best ones, the original one, the original one. All right, yeah. Mike, I really appreciate it.